the farting. All right, Ms. Cashmere Sparkle Parker. <laughs> we are live on the Reading and Red show and with our agent spotlight. We have a great uh, group of participants joining us in Zoom and on Facebook. So excited to be here with you today. How are you, Ms. Cashmere? I am doing wonderful. I'm blessed and I'm so honored to be here. I'm super excited. Awesome, awesome. Well, we are extremely excited to have you as one of our spotlighted agents today. Uh, and I did email you over some questions. I hope you got those. I did, I did. I, you know, I feel like you're such a celebrity because in our in our Zoom group, it's just like all of the cashmere uh, supporters are, are in here. We love them. So we're gonna, I'm going to have the chat room open as well. So as we get going through here, want to make sure that we answer any questions that our um, participants have as well. If you have questions on Facebook, please ask them there. Um, but thank you, Kashmir, for joining us. I want to start us off by just opening it up and just tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us how long you've been in real estate. Ooh, okay. Well, um, I am originally from New Jersey, but I say that Jersey made me, but St. Pete raised me. Um, I was raised on the south side of St. Petersburg, and I absolutely positively love my city. I have been in some aspect, I guess you can say, of real estate for, I don't want to age myself, going on 15 years, Rachel. Can you believe it? Wow. Yeah, so I started my senior year in high school. I was given an opportunity of selling condo conversions without a license because I was working for a small developer. And it just, it, it, it just something I kind of fell into, didn't mean to. And I did that. I did property management. I was a regional property manager. I was a regional leasing manager, kind of played in those aspects and just decided to me, I believe, you know, I'm going to go into my mission that this was just something that God wanted me to do. And here I am. And here you are, and we're so fortunate that you are here and in business with us. I, I do apologize, Kashmir, like my phone's ringing. I got things happening around me, so I- Me too. I don't just worry. that phone. I'm like, leave me alone. You're fabulous, Rachel. I already know you, honey, you're sort of a big deal. I know you have a lot of stuff going on. Anybody right now, I just have time for the fabulous Kashmir. So I, do, I did want to make sure, though, I pulled up uh, our Facebook feed. So in case anybody does have questions in there that I'm able to answer those. So I just want to make sure I had the comments up. And I got them up. All right. So you said that you got started in real estate um, with a condo conversion about 15 years ago. How long have you had your real estate license? I've had my license now, I think about, let's just see, 16, since 2016, but I did, but I wasn't active. I got my license. I kind of took some time to build my business. I was doing a lot of traveling um, and then just really got active about 2018 was when okay. I was the business. Okay, awesome. Now, I know that when people get their real estate license and they get started in this career, uh, you know, everybody has big dreams. And I um, just wanted to know, you know, when you got started in your real estate business, what were, your, what were the dreams that you had going into the business? Just like brand new, fresh, like what, what did you think you were going to accomplish at that time? Man, I really didn't. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't want to take over the world. You know, that's just me in general. I was like, yes, I'm going to get in and I'm going to kill it. But to be honest with you, I never really thought that standard real estate was where I was going to be. I had some other business ventures that I was doing. And to me, this just kind of seemed like a means that would kind of get me to that next place. And what's so crazy about it is that it really just kind of took off. I was really blessed that I went in and did a first deal. And I say that my clients become my family and it, literally at that point really took off. But my goal ultimately was I wanted to own the largest minority brokerage that ever existed. I really wanted to be that brokerage that was able to serve my community. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I know that's kind of how, you know, you and I met, you came to a class that we were hosting um, in our old office. It might have been a business planning workshop. Do you remember what it was? I think it was about mega agent training. I'll never forget. I told you this was an answer prayer. It really was. I was. I had gotten into a point where my business, where I think you may have gotten into that. I started with Keller Williams, decided to leave, was with a smaller boutique brokerage that was amazing. But I thought that at that point when my business kind of blew up, I needed a little bit more. 
I needed to kind of put some new systems into place to be able to handle the magnitude of my business. And I had actually said a prayer and said, hey, Lord, I need some help. I don't know what to do. You know, now I have this business on my hands that I was not expecting. How do I keep up with it? Because my brand was very important to me. And I got a phone call from Tom. And Tom told me, you know, at that time, he was like, Cashmere, I'm not sure if you're aware of your numbers, but you're on track to become what we like to call a Keller Williams Omega agent. And I would like to invite you to, um, I guess it was the business planning workshop. And I was like, absolutely, I'd love to come. And then I met this fabulous young lady here who was just up there doing her thing. And I think if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think everybody else was, well, how do you generate more business? And my question was, well, how do I maintain what I have? And you asked to speak with me. And I think from there, that's all she wrote. Right, right. Well, I just remember you in the room, like so full of energy, excitement, and curiosity, which was key. Like you were, you were asking questions, you were engaged, you were participating. And it became, it was quickly apparent to me that you're definitely, you know, know what you're doing. You had you had strong volume that you had done and it was like you were looking for the model or the platform to be able to continue growing and i find that it's very very common um where people are looking for the the platform just not so common that they have uh the drive and the passion that you you were in there with so uh that's why i wanted to meet with you and then when you and i met i you know, you, t you told me a little bit more about this um, desire for the minority uh, brokerage. So tell us a little bit about kind of, you know, and it, it was building wealth, um, helping the African-American community build wealth. So tell me a little bit more about that. Well, absolutely. I mean, I'm very big on helping my community. I truly believe that homeownership or, or real estate in general is the number one way to accumulate wealth but not just wealth, generational wealth, something that we can pass down from generations to generations. And I understand that unfortunately, African-Americans because of our socioeconomic circumstances, sometimes it's not as easy for us to be able to acquire a loan to get real estate. So taking all that knowledge in, I decided that I wanted to help people that can get into it that are falling behind on the wealth gap. And it really just became a passion of mine. And I said, okay, what is it that I can do to help? And I really just kind of went into it with education. That was my main goal of being able to educate as many people as I possibly could so that they would understand the importance of homeownership or land. You know, I believe that's the best investment that you can ever make because God isn't making any more land and people are still reproducing at a massive rate. So it, it means that it, it means something and we need to try to acquire as much of it as possible. Right. And I, I remember that some of the things that you and I discussed were those socioeconomic dynamics and also degentrification um, and the education, just the lack of education. And like it was your mission and is your mission just to to help people understand. I mean, there there has been a, a cultural education gap in that home ownership in certain communities and you saw yours as definitely a community where this gap existed and you wanted to bridge it so what have been some of the activities that you've done over the past couple of years to to help spread some knowledge in your community well just getting out there you know i really come from a a wonderful family that taught me that giving back is key it is your duty to give back. And so getting out there into the community to understand what is going on, especially when it comes to, I'll say, you know, St. Petersburg right now, we have a flourishing city. It's beautiful. But unfortunately, a lot of our neighborhoods are falling behind to understand what is really going on and that we need to hold on to that wealth that we do have. So just getting out there, doing a lot of home ownership classes within our community. I know in 2018, that was one of the blessings that I think kind of really put us on the map was that we did, we rented out the Museum of History and did a class that filled up, it was a free class, but it filled up within 24 hours, we had a hundred people that were confirmed. And with that being said, you know, really just understanding that 
if you want the answers, somebody is here to help you. And I really built my business on understanding what obstacles and what challenges we have, typically as a culture, unfortunately, that we may have just because of history. And then how do we overcome them? So if that has something to do with building credit, how can I help people build their credit? How do we help people file their taxes correctly? How do we find the different programs, the lending programs that are out there that can help them with down payment? So it was really just getting in there and doing the research and touching the people and finding out what is it? Why aren't we able to purchase? Why, why aren't we able to do this thing? And trying to get as much of that information as possible and then spread it out. And you know, um, you and I have been in business together, has it been three years? I think it's two. I'm thinking about it. It's like two and a half. You really? can't put that extra year on me yet, Rachel. I don't know. I have, we, we both have to look back at our timeline. I'm not sure yet. I mean, I don't, I'm don't gonna, age me all three years, Rachel. Lord, help me. <laughs> it just, it feels like we've been working together maybe longer than yes, we exactly. have because it, it has been such a, a great experience. And, you know, I have observed a shift in your tactic. When, and I apologize. I didn't prepare you with some of these questions. I like the natural flow of conversation as well. Um, but I did definitely notice a shift in your tactic. I noticed that, you know, in the beginning, your passion to go into the community to teach wealth building through home ownership was key. I've seen, uh, I also saw that that created such a demand on you and your resources and your time that it was almost <laughs> like overwhelming. Yeah. And, and I love the shift that I've seen you take with this is because you've decided you're, you can't do it on your own. You need an army. Very and true. So talk to us about what you're doing now. Well, even just to go a little bit more into that, I love what I do. I genuinely love helping people. That's my big thing. I mean, if I can help you, I want to help you. And probably to my detriment, because when I'm in, it falls in. I know, you know, I know, I told you my clients become my family. So I know they're big wise. I know what they do. So though it's lovely and I want all my clients to feel like, it is just me and them because I have the, the business that I have now, it was starting to get a little bit draining. I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm, I'm a first time, first generation business owner in my family. I'm still trying to figure it out the best way that I can and keep up. And like I mentioned before, my brand is very important to me. So being able to deliver that quality of service that has, that people are kind of accustomed to. So what happened was that when I wanted to get out there, I was, it was amazing. Like I said, it blew up. I knew that there was a need but then I blew down. <laughs> I was exhausted. I honestly had to take a year to really just sit back and put those tools and systems into place to be able to handle the magnitude of the business that I had coming in. But what I also realized was like you just mentioned, it wasn't about me. I always say that this is my mission. And if I saw that there was a need there, and I do believe that that need came because of the fact that just historically, we have trust issues. And if I want to go out there and impact the community that looks like me, a lot of times, you know, they, there's just, because I am able to overcome those obstacles and help them overcome those obstacles, they feel like there's a level of trust there. And so with that being said, I understood, well, unfortunately, when we look at statistics, only, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's only 7% of realtors on the National Association of Realtor are minority or African-American. And out of that, only 52% are full-time agents. So when you get into buying real estate and we're talking about buying the biggest purchase that a lot of us sometimes are ever gonna make in our lives, that's a big deal. And you wanna feel like you can trust the person that's helping you. So with that being said, I realized I can't do it alone. And we need to get other real estate agents that are out there that can get back into the community and give back in order to um, make a larger ripple, if I should say. So I realized, you know, it's not just about me. Okay, well then how can I take this education of a passion that I have? Because again, my family does come from education and say, all right, well, what do I need to do? And that's train up some other real estate agents. You know, how, how do I help some other agents get out there and be successful and share the wealth? It's not just, I don't believe in competition. I don't believe in um, a lack mentality. You know, I've always been blessed to believe in a wealth mentality and understand that together we all win that we're stronger together. And then if my brother or my sister or anybody else that's out there that can learn and do well and take the things that I learned and the mistakes that I made and fix them and can get out there 
and do more, that's a wonderful thing. You know, then we all win. Everybody's able to go out there and touch somebody else. So that's what kind of shifted in my business. So I said, you know, how, how do I share the wealth? How do I get out there and help other people become successful? And it was so smart. It's like, how can, how can you help other realtors who help the community? So instead of just one realtor help in the community, you've, you're building an army to go out there and really penetrate. And I love that. And, you know, I, I'm also very grateful for you and your insight. Um, all, I, you know, one thing that I hope that you know about me from our relationship is always open to um, different ideas and ways. So you came to me with um, a coaching program, essentially, for the African-American realtor. And just, I mean, I like to think I'm open-minded and that I absorb information and I tweak and make adjustments. But you were so spot on like <laughs> with, with what you were saying, like how we teach Ignite and the conversations that we teach and the scripts that we teach do not speak to everybody in every community. And I think too often we do, we, do, we look at this, this blanket model, but you took that and you're like, Rachel, this doesn't work over here, but I can make it work. So share with us a little bit about like how you took the Keller Williams training and the model to use it as the, the foundation and tweak it to work with what you're doing. Well, I truly believe, I mean, I love Keller Williams. I think I am, this was another blessing. I love you. I love the culture of our office. We have so many amazing agents that I'm sure are watching. Hi guys, hi my family, um, that are really here and very supportive. And so have you been extremely supportive. But I also understood just kind of being around the office I kind of got lonely, <laughs> just the lack of a better word. And then and to realize, okay, well, how, how do we switch this? And understanding that the Keller Williams were number one when it comes to education, absolutely. But then when I took that education and started trying to apply it to what I knew that I was going after, the certain demographic that I was going after, I said, listen, unfortunately, you know, if you don't, you know, we're very transparent with each other, let's go into it. I mean, one of the main models with Keller Williams that they teach us is door knocking. Yeah. Well, that, that was my awe. I know you were going to throw that out there, Rachel. Well, I'm sorry. No, I, I was just, so, you know, that was like, when you came to me, that was like the number one thing. I mean, we're going through 2020 with all, oh. everything that's going on in our world. And you're talking, and you bring up door knocking. I'm like, well, yeah, Never thought about it. you're right. Well, like you don't think about teaching a black male to go door knocking. I mean, that's what we're doing. But you we may get a different response, right? Than, than the typical agent. And again, it's not that we don't want to focus on that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying by any means that we're victims, but no, you have and to call I, a spade I, a spade. We got to call a spade a spade. You know, how do we talk about building and growing the typical real estate business where one of the main things that we push, let's just say, get out there and knock on these doors and greet people. Honey, I mean, when I, the first time I ever went door knocking and it was in Snow Island and it was wonderful with all these beautiful houses. And I'd like to think that, you know, sometimes people are not aware of what I may be or, you know, my race. So, but I went in there and it was the first time I felt so disrespected. Oh my goodness. I will never forget. I went to the door and there was a dog. I saw the people and they were leaving as I was walking up and there was a, no lie. This is a true story. I saw a dog and a cat that there was a screen door and I'm knocking and I'm all excited. Like I'm gonna sell this house. Let's go. And I was promoting an open house. And the dog, and we were knocking on the door and the dog and the cat were looking behind us like, mom, dad, I know you're here. Are you going to come to the door? And they were not interested in anything that I was selling. That's all I'm going to say. So just understanding that I love the models. I understand that they are, they are important, but how can I flip them to actually, to help us become successful in this industry? Because th there, there are some things that just don't quite work. Um, when it, when well, it and, and door knocking, door knocking is difficult for a lot of people. Like you can be, you, you can go out as a male and door knock and not get anybody to answer. And you can go out too. as an email and get a whole bunch of people to answer. But That's you know, true. it's just understanding these little nuances and how you've taken it. Even, you know, the model is lead generation. How you lead generate is going to be. Yes. 
That well, that was a big one. Yes, yeah. definitely a legion. And understanding too, again, historically, unfortunately, a lot of African Americans do, did not own homes because they were not allowed to own homes. There were things that were put into place. They were redlined into certain areas. So when you're talking about selling to your sphere or going out there, there's a big difference there. You know, we had to create our sphere. We had to, you know, I had to learn to take what it is that I had and say, okay, well, unfortunately, I may not have that many people that I can touch that would typically be, be what you consider mortgage ready. Um, but how can I get them ready? You know, how can I say, I mean, I have some clients that we, I just recently closed with. I worked with them for three years, you know, two years of really sitting down and helping them guide their, their path, or as I like to call it, their freedom plan, um, to help them really put those steps into place to be able to become mortgage ready. So that was a big one when, like you said, lead generation and, and creating your sphere and, and basically using what we have. To, to make it in sparkle. You know, my, my big thing girl is, you know, the sparkle guide. That's what we created. It's the sparkle guide for creating your life by design was my goal. Well, and I want to make sure we hit on that sparkle guide, but I, you know, I, I mentioned the word degentrification earlier, and that was something that you really shed light on for me. And I don't think that enough people understand what that is. So give us a, a brief, um, synopsis of what degentrification is and what it's doing in the African-American community. You said gentrification. Yes. Sorry, I said D. Ooh, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Rachel, that's, that's, that's a tough one that can sometimes ruffle some feathers. Okay, I think you give an unruffled feathered one? Uh, I, I will try my, yes, I will try my best to give an unruffled feathers one. You know, gentrification typically means when a group would come in and um, take an area that they would think is less desirable and then make it more desirable and kind of push out the people. Go ahead. Your microphone went really low. Did you guys do something different no, over there? No, no, no. Well, it was raising and then lowering and raising and lowering. And they knew that we were going to ruffle the feathers. Can you hear me now? No, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, I get. Well, girl, I'm all about ruffling feathers. <laughs> She, you know, I'm probably the most politically incorrect person only, only out of love and curiosity. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can you hear me better now? Is that uh, I, I mean, it just went quiet. And okay, hold on. Let me try. Is it just me, guys, or did she go low volume on you guys, too? Can you guys hear me? I, well, I just turned up my volume so I can hear you better. Can you hear me better? It, uh, Morgan said it went, it went quiet. You're not actually okay. quiet. The volume just went down. Can I speak up? Is that better? You actually are much better now. It came back okay, good. Okay, that well, that was very disrespectful, but I'm glad that we're back together here. Okay, is that is that good though? Yes, Lev, tell us about gentrification. Okay, so typically what I know of gentrification is when a group of people will come in to a considered less desirable area and make it more desirable. But unfortunately with that, typically the people that live in that area become displaced. And right now, because St. Pete, we're okay. I want to make sure you can hear me. It actually oh, lowered yeah. again. Um, so here, let me let me just say this. I know that sometimes somebody's grandmother might own a home, right? And that grandmother probably owns that home outright. And maybe or maybe not, she has left that to her children and or grandchildren who now live in a home and they don't have a mortgage. They still struggle to pay the taxes and to maintain the property, right? So um, so that's part of the education piece that I know is something that you've worked on. Um, but also investors see this as an opportunity to buy something cheap. And it's, it, it, so let's just, let's just say, for example, you're living in the home, your grandmother gave you this home, it's paid off, you don't have a mortgage, and somebody knocks on your door and they're offering you a big lump sum of money, the most amount of money you've ever seen or heard of. Um, most people don't understand the, the, the implications of accepting that. So then what happens? I really hope my microphone is working. Can you hear me? Because I have a lot to say on that. We can hear you. It just, it's just low. Okay, I'm gonna come up. Down. I'm it's gonna go up closer. It's back okay. Down. I'll tell you when it goes down. Okay. So yes, and it all starts with education. A lot of times, our grandparents or our big moms or big papas, you know, own these homes, and they were 
like you said, when they get passed down, a lot of times, like when you mentioned they can't afford the taxes, well, somebody has to educate them to let them know you have to pay your taxes. And if you don't pay those taxes every year, you could potentially lose your property. But what happens sometimes is that the grandparents have typically stayed in those houses for a lot longer. And a lot of that has to do sometimes with the lending that they were given at one point in time. Um, and now that they own these houses outright, they've been in them for 30, 40 years or maybe even much longer. So when you have the grandchildren now that have this property because unfortunately the grandparents have now passed away, the problem is that they don't think they want that house. They don't understand where the value of that home is. All they know is that it's an older home that probably needs renovations that has not been updated, not all the time, but sometimes. And they think, well, I don't want to live here. They don't know how much that property, keep talking, that yeah. property is worth. So what happens at that time is that unfortunately these investors are coming in to take advantage of those people and they'll come in and offer them, like you mentioned, far less, sometimes 25 or less percent of what the actual market value of that home is and tell them, I will give you this cash. And because they're not aware that it's worth three times that, they go ahead and sell. And with that being said, their wealth and their generational wealth goes out the door along with that check. And right. that's unfortunately what has been happening. And there, it causes a couple of different issues. Uh, first of all, they, they get the money, but what are they going to do with it? Right, they they can't go buy another home uh, because it, do they qualify for a mortgage? Was what it what is their credit score? You know, uh, what is the down payment needed? So, like typically, they're not going to go get a new home. They might go rent, but they don't. They're not reinvesting it. And and then the investor goes in there. And guys, I am a real estate investor. I'm not saying that all real estate investors are bad. This is another way to build wealth is through real estate investing. I think what's key here is that we're pointing out um, to some of the things that happen when education isn't there. Exactly. I mean, an understanding again, it just, sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but just making sure that people are getting their even share is the big one for me. But yes, and unfortunately, what a lot of people are not aware of is that our rental market, you know, St. Pete at one point was number four in the country for coastal places to live and invest. It's beautiful here. And a lot of us are not aware of that. So right now in downtown St. Pete, where our office is located, studio apartments are starting at 1750. 1750. So with that being said, when you're renting and you have to pay first, last and security, and you have to pay, you know, all of these months up front, the little bit of money that they were just given is now out the door, you know, within one year of renting. So I think the big thing is just education and understanding, you know what I mean, that again, I can say it for investors, people, they can always try it, but I'm I'm here to educate and a lot of my people are gonna know now. So try it if you want to. I was trying to get as much education out there as possible so that we can be aware of what's going on and, and be able to fight in the good fight as well. Yeah, and, and just to give you guys an idea, like I know that there might be somebody being offered um, $30,000 for a home that would sell on the resale market for 90 to 120,000, even with the remote. Even the lot price, I mean, <laughs> that the lot price itself is typically between one and 125, 100 and 125,000. But if people don't know and they're given the opportunity for a lump sum of money that they've never had before, it's like winning the lottery. So your position and your mission here is just to educate. And that's, that's why I'm here to support everything that you're doing and been so excited to work with you in building this new army. So yes, tell me, thank you. Tell well, me if that, go ahead. Well, the last thing that I want to say is yes, that's great. There's nothing wrong with investing, honey. I'm an investor. I'm all about it as well. But the only thing that I will say is that understand just fair share, you know, what does it profit a man to gain the world, but to lose their soul? you know, and understanding and taking advantage sometimes of people that, that are not aware. So we get it. Like you said, we understand that investing is a, is a part of, you know, this real estate game that both of us are in. But yes, my goal is just to get out there and just spread as much education so that we can get it, you know, get into it as well. So everybody gets it, right? Yes, everybody. Let's all build wealth 
together. together. Amen. There's enough, you know, there's enough <laughs> out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. So, um, and before we go into, um, your sparkle guide, I want to, I want to go back to something that you mentioned originally as um, one of your big dreams when you got into real estate was to own the largest minority brokerage. And, you know, since that time you have joined Keller Williams, um, you know, you mentioned that 7% of the National Association of Realtors are African-American, only 52% of, the, uh, of that 7% work full-time in the business, um, and that you are feeling lonely in, in our office. Well, with only 7% and 52% working full-time, <laughs> that makes sense, right? Um, you're now a, um, a chairperson with the KW Social equity task force. Yes. Okay. I am now the, I am now a, I was been blessed to be, I'm one of the leaders of the region for the social equity task force that was right. created by Gary Keller. So tell us what that is. Well, our, the main goal of the KW North Florida region, I made sure I had it so that we can be on point is there are, the goal is to make it the number one workplace for diversity, equity, and inclusion across all brokerage companies. So they really want to put Keller Williams on that map for being the, the place that welcomes all. And, and that's really what it is. We have focuses, you know, our main focus, we have four main focuses, which is wealth building, we have diversity in education and then minorities in leadership. And right now the main focus is just on wealth building for minorities in real estate, which really is perfect because it coincides with everything that I was already doing and working towards. And this is just a little, a little selfish piece for me only because I love everything that we do. Um, you know, you, your goal was to own your own, the largest minority brokerage. Now you're seeing a path uh, go back to our African proverb, what connected. The perfect place to put it. Yeah. If you want to go far, go alone. No, sorry. If you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. And so now you're seeing how we as a larger organization can go farther together. So talk to me a little bit about the KW Social, Social Equity Task Force, your role in that, and then what you're doing locally within our, within our office. Well, like you just mentioned, I think that's a big one. I mean, I saw the tools and the resources that were provided to us through Keller Williams to understand, again, if we're number one in education, you see the education is big for me. That's that's in every, how can I take the model and the dream of what I've always had and still will have, and how do I apply it through Keller Williams? How can I say, okay, here's a vessel, here's this huge machine. I mean, with Keller Williams being what by agent count, the number one brokerage in the world, how do I take this vessel that has already been laid in front of me? And how do I make it work for us? How do I get everybody to come together? Because I, to me, it'd be selfish to say I wanted to start my own brokerage right now. Because I, with me focusing on running a brokerage, I wouldn't be able to educate. I wouldn't be able to get out there and help people because I'd be so focused on that one thing. And I had to take my own ego out of the, out of the play and say, well, I don't care if my name is on the lights right now. My goal is to help. If I truly believe that my mission is to help as many people as possible, why not partner with the number one that's doing it? And how do we work through that? So that was already my goal when joining Keller Williams. And then when Gary Keller, because of all of the unfortunate events that happened in 2020 or forever, but really highlighted in 2020, for Gary Keller, just step up and say, you know what, I'm, I don't believe in this. You know, he's, I love it, you know, love it, he's a man of God and really said, this is not right. He wanted to stand with his minority brothers and sisters and said, I want to do what's right. And I want to find out what's going on within my brokerages and decided to create this social equity task force. And I, long and behold, myself and the fabulous Jack Smith, who is a regional leader with me, we were asked to be on the, the excuse me, to be a regional representative. And then from there, they were asking for regional leaders and we were selected to be regional leaders. So that's really perfect for what it is that we were already creating because in our office specifically, myself, as long as co-founding with um, Ron Platt, we created the Empowerment Committee, 
which was a committee way before the Social Equity Task Force that was supposed to be a support group essentially for other African American and minority agents to come together so that we could discuss the obstacles and the things that we were having that were may possibly be hindering our businesses and how do we come together and build that wealth. So with us creating already the Empowerment Committee and then being selected to become a regional leader now for the Social Equity Task Force that's focused on, like I told you, wealth building and all these things that I was already kind of working on, it, it just seemed to kind of be perfect. And I'm taking that by storm that is on a national level and a regional level. And I'm trying my best or doing my best to make sure that I pass that on um, to our office specifically and any other brokerage that, that is interested in learning more about what it is that they can do to help. I love that. I love that. You know, it was, it was a couple of years ago, I was standing in Michael Reedy's office and Jack Smith walks in there and he said, Rachel, I want to make us the office of choice for the LGBTQ community. And I said, okay. He's like, well, what do I need to do? I said, let's do it. And he's like, really? <laughs> That's all we need to do? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so when you brought this to me, it's like, okay, how do we do it? You know, it's always about how do we do it? And I think that is something that's so key with Keller Williams is you don't work for me. I work for you. And that is a hundred percent what I, you know, I hope others will see is that your passion, your drive, your dreams, I'm just here to help you get them. Um, so I, I, you know, being able to have your group in the office, like, let me tell you guys, if, if you don't know this, when Kashmir's in the office, you hear it, you know. It. <laughs> what day is it that you guys teach? What day is it? Tuesday. So, and Tuesday. shout out to my Sparkle, my Sparkle crew. I am sure they are somewhere in here. Um, so, you know, shout out to all of them. They are wonderful. But yes, but not only just that, Rachel, you hit on it, the culture. Our office has been amazing. Like we have so many wonderful agents that have been out there. They've been supportive. You know, they found out, you know, how can they support us? They, they wanted to join in and they're wonderful. I mean, I truly appreciate you. I appreciate the other agents for wanting to get on board. You know, they're, they're all about it and, and just feeling the love and helping to be very welcoming for what it is that we're trying to do and um, just not allowing us to come in loud sometimes and excited and, and throwing glitter as many places as we can and just understanding that, you know, we're trying to create something really history making here. And you are, Kashmir. Your group, I love watching everybody. I mean, they are in there on the phones like nobody's business. I mean, they're focused, they're, they're, they're practicing, they're role playing, they're absorbing the information. You're at the front of the helm, you're teaching it, <laughs> taking the millionaire real estate agent model and you've, you've tweaked it into the sparkle guide and you are sharing with them and they love it. But not only that, it's so, Michael Reedy and I talk about this all the time. It's not just the knowledge you have to execute. So they're not just learning, they're executing. And that is so key. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so thankful and I'm honored and I'm humbled. I mean, honestly, I never would have thought that this is the direction that I would have gone in. Absolutely not. Like I, I, I think that it kind of worked out, but just to have these people to trust me, to lead them, you know, and I understand, you know, I believe leaders lead from the front. So what is it that I can do to continue to inspire them to say, you know what, let's keep going. We don't care about obstacles. We don't see that. How do we get out here and we become a, a force to be reckoned with in, in anything? And they are wonderful. When I tell you they're serious, they're beasts now. Okay, people better be careful. They, they are ready to go. I love them. They're amazing. I mean, I know Casey was on um, Reading and Red last week and just commenting. She she has a goal of 40 contacts a day. And yes. I was like, yes. girl, that is- okay. We don't play. I exactly. Well, I think when you came in to speak with us, remember, and you were talking about, I guess, setting one appointment, I think it was per week. And our goal is four. I think they'll put they'll put in the comments. I think ours is four. So, you know, we're really, we're, we're, we're setting some big goals there. You know, we believe to shoot for the universe. And if you land in the stars, okay, we'll take it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Kashmir, what you're doing is amazing. And 
I think every realtor in every situation has obstacles, but the way that you've taken the obstacles, you've shined, you've shown the light on them and you're like, Hey, th these are the obstacles that we're going to face. And this is how we're going to overcome them. And let's do it together and let's have fun doing it. Let's celebrate. I mean, there are birthdays and champagnes and cake <laughs> and lunch, but the seriousness of it and, and the education of, of not just the realtors, but the, the community they're talking to and the way that you guys are doing it, you definitely are making a huge impact. I'm excited to see the results and the numbers because I know that's coming and I know it's just going to, it's going to blow up. It really is going to blow up. We're Thank already you. working to get you the national recognition, recognition when Jay Pop is on and everybody else, but you're making, you're making a tremendous impact. And I'm so grateful to be in business with you. Thank you. Rachel, you are amazing. I really appreciate that. And like I said, it's not about me. You know, I wish that I can take that. I, you know, I give all the honor to God. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just like, I've learned that when you're blessed, it's your goal to bless others. You know, wealth comes to you to be passed on to others. So I take my platform very seriously. As anybody that knows me knows that that is, I'm very serious about that and leading people to the, the best ability, or as you talk about trying to help people create the highest platform that they can leap from to, to allow for their families to leave that generational wealth. So I'm, I'm here. I want to help as many people that want to create something like this. I mean, that's my goal. I need you to call Gary Keller. Okay. And let him know that I would like on a national level, I'm a claim it now to be flying around. And how do we create these things? You know, how, how do we get more people involved? Because I would love that. Don't you worry, girl. I'm going to help you get there. Thank you, girl. I know you will. All right. So in, just before we wrap up, uh, I just want to make sure to see if there are any questions that our audience has. I know we do have a time delay on Facebook. Uh, we've got some beautiful comments. Everybody's celebrating you, Kashmir, and, and your team and everything that everybody's doing together. Thanks, guys. Thank you. My family, my Keller Williams family, I can't see any of it. So I'll see it later on. But thank you. I really appreciate it. The support has been awesome. All right. Well, we are so glad that you were, you're here with us in this office and that uh, to be part of what you're doing. So thank you. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you. I and appreciate I'll it. See, I'll see you in the hallway. All right. See you then. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye.